So how much insulation should you be stripping off your wires when dealing with common electrical components like wire connectors and outlets? Now, if you're a DIYer like me, you're not really doing electrical projects daily or even weekly. You're probably taking on one a month or a few times a year, so it's nice to have a refresher and make sure you're doing things correctly and safely. So let's jump in and I wanna help you avoid the five most common mistakes I see DIYers make when taking on basic electrical projects around the house. Number one focuses in on having the right tool to do the job. So if you're gonna do electrical work around your house, you're doing it safely, you know your local code, you should absolutely have a good set of wire strippers. This might sound obvious, but I have seen many people just use a set of linesman's pliers and strip wire. You might have even seen a lot of pros do this, but remember, they are doing this on a daily basis and their hand is probably a little more calibrated to how much force is needed than ours but let me show you exactly why you don't want to do this. So here's a little demo on why we do not use the linesman's pliers or clients to strip off the insulation. So you might see somebody do this with the cutters of these large pliers and then rotate that around, cutting off the insulation. The challenge is when you're inexperienced and you're not doing this all the time, you're probably causing quite a bit of damage to the actual wire itself and you're changing the gauge of the wire. The two main things this is gonna do, one, it's gonna create a hot spot here because now you, do, you no longer have, this would be 12 gauge wire. And two, right at that cut line, this is a failure that I've caused in the past, all you need to do is kind of tuck these wires back in the box and cause a little bit of bend around that cut line and the copper is gonna be much more likely to snap off and fail. And then you're gonna have a much larger issue and have to do some troubleshooting. So that is why we do not use clients and we use a proper set like this hybrid set from Milwaukee, which is kind of my go-to wire strippers to strip the wire. So number two on the five most common mistakes is associated to wire gauge. The two most common gauges that you're gonna run into in residential are 14 gauge wire, which is usually seen on a 15 amp circuit and 12 gauge wire that's usually seen on a 20 amp circuit. Let me show you how to quickly identify that and then also how to make sure you're using the right stripping hole within your wire strippers. So first identifying which wire you have, this is 12 gauge wire and if you use a nickel, if you just had a nickel handy, you don't know what size wire this is, you'll see the thickness of the nickel is almost identical to the thickness of 12 gauge wire. And similarly, a dime and 14 gauge line up really well. So that can help you identify what wire you have. Then dealing with wire strippers, pretty much any wire stripper worth its salt will have two sets of numbers. On one side, at least with this one, runs from eight gauge to 18 gauge. And then on the other side goes to 10 gauge to 20 gauge. The difference here is on this left side, you see it says solid. That means solid core wire or a solid core conductor. This being 12 gauge solid core, this is the hole that would be used to strip off the insulation. Now that is the same hole that I would use for 14 gauge stranded wire. Thus the STRD stands for stranded. So make sure you're using the correct hole or you can lead to damage in a similar failure mode as we showed in point number one. So number three on our list is associated to strip gauges commonly found on light switches and outlets. So here are a couple examples which is a standard residential grade light switch made by Eaton. You can see that little line right there. So that is the strip gauge for this light switch. And then I have a, a Legrand commercial grade 20 amp receptacle. And this has, you can see the two lines right there on the side. That is actually the strip gauge. Now, before I show you the common mistake with strip gauge, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to get you guys' feedback just really quickly. Did you know there was a strip gauge or did you not know there was a strip gauge on most light switches and outlets? And I appreciate just that little bit of feedback, but let's look closer at the strip gauge and I'll show you the main mistake that's commonly made. So using that Eaton light switch as an example, you can see the strip gauge more clearly now right here. The only problem is there's two main ways to actually wire this light switch. You could use the speed wiring or also many people call it backstabbing method. 
through this hole here, which is made for 14 gauge wire. Or you could do a traditional clockwise shepherd's hook or J hook around that screw terminal, which is called side wiring. This strip gauge using this 12 gauge wire is roughly about a half inch. That is made for speed wiring. Likewise, if I look at this commercial grade receptacle, that strip gauge right here is made for back wiring. So it's made when you're leveraging, you see that little plate right there? When you're tightening down the screw and the plate is applying pressure and making the contact with the conductor, that is what the strip gauge is made for. It's actually not made if you're doing the side wiring method on either one of these components. So that leads us right into point number four, and that is stripping too little or too much wire. So let me show you an example here on the light switch of too much and too little. This is a little over one inch, about one and one to eighth of an inch stripped wire. So using that top terminal, we'll go in the clockwise direction. Remember, you always want the wire going in the clockwise direction. So once you're tightening it, it will want to pull the wire in opposed to pushing it out. All right, so that is the example of too much. Now, if I followed the strip gauge, I would strip this much copper. Let's show you what that looks like if you use it for side wiring. Again, creating that J hook. And you can quickly see what issue that's gonna come up with. Again, we'll tighten down that screw terminal. All right, so over an inch, you can see we start to have exposed copper, especially on this hot side for a light switch or for a outlet or receptacle is a big no-no because what that introduces is the opportunity to short this hot side against maybe a metal box, other wires that are floating around in the box. It's just not gonna equal a nice fit and finish install. Likewise, when you have too much insulation, now you start to actually pinch the insulation between the screw terminal and you're just limiting the amount of contact area for this terminal because now you have insulation opposed to stripped copper. So if you're doing side wiring, you'd wanna shoot for about three quarters of an inch, not like this, which is half inch, not like this, which is a little over an inch, but three quarters of an inch is what you're looking for if you're gonna be doing a traditional side wiring. And the last item or mistake on our list associates to how much wire to strip when you're using wire connectors. So if we focus on wire nuts first, this would be an example of two 12 gauge wires coming together and being pre-twisted. Now, most manufacturers of wire nuts say you shouldn't pre-twist, but in the industry, it seems to be consensus. If you want a stronghold for decades to come, you do pre-twist. Now, depending on what size wire nut you put on this, if we use the smaller wire nut and started to tighten that down on the wires, you're gonna have a little bit of exposed copper right on the end. Now what that does is it increases the likelihood that something might be coming in contact inside the box and causing a short. So you need to know what size wire nut you're putting on because if you went with a larger one in this case, now your exposed copper is well within the wire nut itself and it's just gonna make for a much more robust install. So those are the top five mistakes that I've seen DIYers do, but I have also done in the past. Now, if you wanna continue learning, check out this video right here. I'll go through the top 10 things you don't know about a standard everyday outlet. So thanks for joining me on this video and take care.